The Earth is heating up year by year, but the rate at which it does so depends on your location. Land points are heating faster than ocean points. If we want to separate the two, we need a way of masking our data. That's why today, on Climate Unboxed, I'm going to show you how to generate a land-sea mask. So how are we going to do this? Well, just above my head, right here, we can see a schematic of three grid boxes. And in these grid boxes, we have a schematic of the topography, the height of the surface. So the first box is a sea point, and in that box, the topography is actually below sea level. It's showing the sea floor. In the second and third boxes, we're instead showing land where the topography is actually above sea level. So if we have a topographical file that shows the height, we can use this to decide whether a grid box is a land point or an ocean point. Where are we actually going to get a topographical file? Well, this is where we introduce a little piece of magic from CDO. CDO will allow us to create a topographical file from nothing. Just like magic. So the command to perform this little piece of magic is called CDO Topo. And then we need an output file name and here we're calling it topo.nc. So here we have an empty directory. So let us now try to create a topographical file with the topo command. And this is the output file. And the command has worked. There we have topo.nc. But when we try and open this with nc view, we get this error message nc view can't recognize format of input file topo.nc. And the reason for this is that CDO produces grip by default, irrespective of the file extension. So what we need then is actually the command line option minus F NC4 to ensure that the output is in NetCDF format. We can also have the standard NetCDF3 or we can also specify GRIB or GRIB2 formats as well. So now what we want to do is try again, but this time we're going to specify minus F for the file format NC4 command is topo and then we have topo.nc and this time when we open the file we have a global file of the topographical height there are positive values over the land and negative values over the oceans and the resolution is half a degree we can confirm the resolution by first of all just confirming the name of the longitude and latitude we can see we have long and lat and we can print those out then using nc dump minus v for variable and then for example longitude we notice we have a half a degree resolution so we can create a topographical file very easily using cdo it's global and by default it produces a half degree resolution but the problem is we can't combine this with our data file because our data file may be on a smaller domain and even if our data file is global it won't necessarily be on the same half a degree grid so this means we need to remap the data now i've already shown you how to remap the data file using remap and then nn for example for nearest neighbor you can see the video in the link just right above my head we can also use bilinear or conservative remapping and so we can remap the topographical file to a new file I'm calling topo underscore r using CDO remap and then the target data file to specify the grid right after the comma. However, we don't actually need to do this in these two separate stages because in fact, what we can also do is we can provide the data file directly as an argument to the topo command. So here we actually combine these two together. We have CDO minus F NC4. Then we have topo to create the topographical file. 
and then comma, and then the target resolution, we can just provide it our data file, data.nc, and then we have an output. So this will automatically regrid the topographical file onto the same grid and domain as the data file. Now, this uses nearest neighbor interpolation. So if you want to use a different interpolation method, you will need to do the two separate steps. So that's step one. We now have a topographical file that's on the same resolution. Now what we need to do then is we need to convert this into a mask. And we can do that using the logical commands that we've also seen in a previous video. So we take the topographical file and we use the logical command greater than or equal to a constant and we provide the argument zero. So what does this do? It, in the output file, makes a mask where wherever the topographical height is above sea level, we will end up with a one and where we're below sea level, we end up with a zero. We can also use less than or equal to a constant to make a mask which has ones for the ocean points. Now it seems like a simple step to combine this with our data file, but wait, there's a problem, no? If we imagine a situation, here we have our three grid boxes, one ocean and two land points, and here again we're imagining a data set of temperature, and in the middle row we have our newly created masks with one over land and zero over ocean. If we are simply to multiply these two together in order to mask the data, then what happens is we end up with a field which retains the temperature over the land points but sets the temperature to zero over the ocean points. Now immediately you can see that if we make the average spatially, we end up with the incorrect result because if we add up the contents of these boxes, we have 32 plus 28 plus zero makes 60 divided by the three boxes and it gives us an average temperature of 20 degrees. Now that's not what we want. Well, what we actually want to do then is set the zeros to missing in these data files. And if we do that, then now if we take the mean in the spatial sense, then we have 32 plus 28 plus missing and the mean function ignores the missing values. So now we have 60 divided by two, which gives us the correct mean spatially. Remember, we need to use mean and not average because average will just set the result to be missing if there's a missing number present. Now, how do we actually do this? Well, there's a command in CDO, which is set C to miss. And again, this should be familiar. Now we can, and we can break this down. Set is for setting parameters. C is the abbreviation we've seen already for constant. To miss is self-explanatory. We're just setting the missing value and then we need to give an argument, and in this case, we want to set the C points, which are zero in the mask, to missing, and they will be set to the value specified in the fill value attribute of the field. We will see later that you can also use, instead of C, you can use R for range, which gives us another option to actually mask out data, which we will see later in the video. So now we are able to mask the data using CDO multiply with the data and then the mask to provide the final output, which is a masked data set. So in this case, using this operation of mole to multiply two fields, it will take the data file, it will take the masked file with the missing points set over ocean and will provide a file which is correctly masked. So let's see this put together. What we're going to be using is the ERA-5 monthly average data on a single level. So we're going to be using the monthly average reanalysis, the two meter temperature, all of the years, and all of the months. And we're going to select NetCDO. Here's the API request. So I've done it here. And here's the file that results. Now this is actually the data from 1950 to 1978 merged with the data from 1979 to 2020. This is a monthly file. I'm going to average this using year mean. And then the output is going to be year mean.xc. So now we have in this directory, we have the uh, T2M and we have T2N underscore year mean. I'm going to move myself 
up here. First of all, make a topographical file. So, we have, so we're going to have CDO minus F NC4 for init CDF four formats and then topo comma t2m and then topo okay so this is already being projected onto the same grid as the input data and if you recall we do cdo and then we have greater than equal to a constant topo and then we're going to have topo and then we'll say mask if we look at this now, we have oh, master NC. Now we have a file which is red over the land and it's blue over the ocean. And if we look at where the cursor value is red out here, we can see that we have zeros over ocean and one over land. Step three was to then turn the zeros into missing. So we say set C to miss comma zero so, so this sets all of the zeros over the ocean to missing values so we have topo it's called mask and then we say topo mask miss dot nc so now when we open this latest file we now have one over all the land points and we have the missing fill value here over the ocean points which are now colored white so now all we need to do is take the product of the data file. So we have the year mean, and now we have the topo mask underscore miss. And I'm going to call it t2m masked.nc, or we could call it land.nc. Now, if you notice, when we make this multiplication, the first file has many time slices. The second one with the mask only has a single time slice. CDO is broadcasting this data by repeating these slices as many times as we need to be able to multiply it by all of the steps in the first file. Now when we open this latest file, t2m underscore land, we see we are left with just the land points and all of the ocean points are masked out and set to missing. So now if we do any spatial statistics, for example, I was showing in the opening scene the time evolution of the land temperature. So we can do this with CDO field mean, t2m land.nc, t2m land mean.nc. Now, when we look at this latest file, we click, and there we have it. We have the global mean land temperature from era five, in this case, starting from 1950 and going all the way up until 2020. And um, as easy as that. So let's just summarize. We have four steps. The first step was to generate the topographical file, which can be remapped on the target data sets grid by passing the data set as an argument to the topo command. Step two then was to create a binary land sea mask and we use the logical function greater than or equal to a constant if we want to mask out and keep the land points or less than a constant with an argument of zero if we want to retain the C points. The third step then was to set all the zero points to missing in this mask by using set C to miss and the last step then was to multiply the data set by this new mask to give us the final masked data. Four easy steps. Now, if you look online, you might find some pages that actually make these steps in a slightly different order. And that's where the set range to miss comes in. So we can actually reverse the second and the third steps. And if we do this, use the range command directly on the topographical file. So in this case, we're taking topo r with the topographical height and the range from minus 20 kilometers all the way up to zero is then set to missing. And then on that resulting file, we then use the logical greater than or equal to a constant. It doesn't really matter which way you do it. If you use this way, of course, you need to make sure that the low bound of the range of values set to missing is lower than the lowest ocean floor depth.
So there we have it. We've seen how we can very quickly and easily mask land or ocean points using CDO in four easy steps. I hope you've enjoyed this video and I look forward to seeing you again soon on Climate Unboxed. And then an output file to store the topography, to store the topography, the topography. <laughs>